we will not work with HRC in any way that increases their credibility as a spokesperson on trans issues. Because we believe that what happened last year was this. One of two things had to have happened. Either they said, either they really believe that trans people are a core part of their fabric and their family, or they don't. If they do, the decision they made last year is unthinkable. They couldn't have done it. If it's not, they have no right to speak for us. You can't speak for people and then say, they don't get theirs now, and that's OK. Now, that's a simplification of what happened. And I'm very well aware that that's a simplification of what happened. And some of my particular personal feelings about this have to do with how it was handled. It was handled very, very badly. Um, and it still continues to be handled very, very badly by a lot of folks on a lot of sides. But you know, just two weeks ago, they re released their congressional scorecard in which they penalized the seven members of Congress who all, up to that point, had 100% perfect civil rights records. All seven of them have been penalized by HRC for supporting a trans-inclusive bill by voting against the non-inclusive bill. So we, we don't believe that you have a right to speak for trans people if you're willing to, to, you know, they kept saying, we need to stay at the table. You don't stay at the table by locking everybody else out. And I happen to believe that they are continually disrespectful of all other LGBT organizations and dismissive of our skills, dismissive of our right to, to be things. So that's some of my personal stuff. That being said, <coughs> we all are in the same activist space. Most of the senior management and a lot of the lower people at HRC are my very dear friends. Um, this isn't personal in that sense, but it is very personal in the sense that we need ENDA so that people can stop dying. You know, it's, it's a real survival thing. People don't have jobs, people don't have hope. And it's very personal to me and to a lot of us for that reason. That being said, I don't advocate one way or another that people do or don't work with HRC. I know what our position is at NCTE. Um, and until um, they change their position, which they are still not willing to do, um, that will be our position. And you know, frankly, and I don't mean this again as a negative HRC thing, their dominance is declining anyway. Um, they used to be the only game in town in DC. And that's no longer true. I think there's now nine LGBT organizations with policy shops in DC. Now, HRC is still the best connected in Congress. Um, but again, I believe they're more interested in using those connections to have connections. We, we as a marginalized LGBT community are so used to being marginalized, we think it's a victory if um, a, a senator talks to us or a senator comes to our fundraiser. We think that's a victory. That's no longer a victory for us. We have real power now. Now is when we have to take those connections and we have to say, here's what we need and here's what you have to do and you have to do it now. And I just don't simply believe they're strong enough to do that. Now, I think those people who work with HRC, and many of you probably in the room do, I think you can make them get there. Um, if they know that their grassroots supporters want that, maybe they will get stronger and more backbone um, and more um, aspirational. Um, because none of the work we're doing, we're doing just to do it. We're doing it to save people's lives and to save people's dignity and, and all of that. But I am very, I, I do not want people to stop giving to HRC. I don't want people to stop going to HRC stuff. I want HRC to be strong. I want HRC to be a real leader. I want them to do their job. I just want them to do it in a way that's responsible. And if you're going to be a spokesperson for trans people, you cannot sell out trans people. Um, and that's, that's my view of it. I, and it's not personal. I don't hate anybody. Um, but it, it is very personal in the sense that this is really serious business. I have fun in my work. I really do. But people are dying. And we, we just have to do that. So that's what I think about that answer.